It's March 4th at 9 o'clock at night and I want to document this for myself. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with this footage um, and upcoming footage, but I just want to document it for myself. So I just want to, you know, explain what's going on. So I would say a couple years ago, I had pain in my jaw and I always thought it was TMJ. I didn't even know what TMJ was, but I thought it was TMJ. And then I thought it was my wisdom teeth. And then I would go to chiropractors and have dental x-rays done and all this stuff. And I just thought it was TMJ or my wisdom teeth. Um, then I was in a car accident and I was going to see back doctor after back doctor and MRIs and x-rays and everything and I noticed a lump on my face right here and I went to go to a follow-up appointment with my back doctor and I mentioned it and he asked me if I lost weight and I said yes and then he said, you need to get an MRI done as soon as possible. So I would say like a couple days later, I got an MRI done with contrast and they found a mass in my face. And then a couple weeks go by and I go to an ENT doctor and he felt it and he said you know usually like if it hurts it's not anything serious like you'll just leave it in um and you shouldn't be worried about it so we're gonna put you on a medication and it'll probably just be it's probably an infection and it will go down with the medication so i took the medication for three weeks i was alerted to it so i had a rash all over my body i was itchy i was nauseous i felt like i had to faint i had to leave work one day because of it i was just sick i also had to switch medications because i found out i was allergic to the other one so i was about to be done with the medication i called the doctor and i told her or the nurse i told the nurse like i'm almost done with it like should the lump gone down by now like it hasn't changed and she said that was a really strong medication. It should have been gone. So I went back to the ENT and he had me get a biopsy done. So I went to another doctor for a consultation. He put, he put an ultrasound on my mass. I saw it, it's a centimeter. And I went in, I'd say the following week. My mom came in town, she took me that experience was horrible um, I was screaming it was so painful because there's nerves in it or around it so a week later this was yesterday on Wednesday March 3rd the doctor called me I was at the beach with my friend and you could tell like in his voice that like something was wrong and i'm just like hello like hi <laughs> and he's like i need to talk to you about your biopsy and i just like was like okay and he's like we found a tumor it's a tumor and i just blacked out i had i i couldn't tell you anything he said after that i don't know and all I remember is him saying that and saying your mom needs to call me right now. So I hang up the phone and I call my mom and I'm like, you need to call the doctor. And she's like, why? I mean, you just need to call the doctor. And she's like, tell me why. And I just said, I have a tumor. My mom calls a doctor and I don't, I have, like, she texted me the name of it, but it's very confusing. A cynic cell tumor of the period, periodic gland. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. He said I need to get a CT done, a CT scan with contrast. So I made the appointment yesterday and I have it tomorrow. Um, 
and on Monday I'm flying to LA to meet up with doctors at USC and UCLA to, you know, talk to them, see what the best move is, see which doctor is the best. Um, I'm scared. I'm trying to cope with it and everyone is just like, how are you dealing with it? How are you coping with it? Like, I don't know. Like, I just feel like I'm in like a daze. Like, I don't know. So, like, I'm just like very shaky, anxious. I just don't feel good. Um, but no, I'm going to LA Monday. Shiloh, Shiloh's my dog. <laughs> She's going to, I have to board her at a boarding place Monday to Friday and I come back Friday I'm gonna work as much as I can get all the hours in as I can and then head back to LA for surgery I call my grandma she had stage 3 cancer and she told me like you know people always say like why me why me but like why another person why wishes upon another person say yourself if that makes sense like this is meant to happen in my life for a reason like it might be hard and it might be confusing and frustrating right now but I know I know that I'll be okay and I know I have a good support system even even on days when I don't feel like it even on days that I feel like I don't have anyone I know that I do because even my family finding out They've been on it, they've been talking to doctors, they've been doing all this stuff, trying to get me out there for consultations and all this stuff and taking time off of work and helping me with Shiloh. Like everyone like has been so supportive and nice. Like I wasn't expecting that. But I know I'll be okay. Yeah, I'll be okay. Okay. So, it's March 7th, it's a couple days later, um, I have so many updates and feelings and emotions and stuff. I've been so confused on what type of tumor I have, if it's cancer or not, like I've just been so out of the loop and so confused. Basically, the tumor I have is an acidic cell tumor in my parotid gland and it's extremely rare and uncommon I think it's two to four percent of the population can get it it's very very rare um, and I was talking to my mom two days ago and I was just so frustrated and so confused because I just want to know if it's cancer or not and I felt like I would be told something and then I'm like wait but like I'm so confused like I just want to know if it's cancer or not so I can like cope with it and just that's the title that's the name this is what i have boom done if people ask or if i decide to tell people then i tell them whatever so my mom was doing research um and i did a little bit of research but i haven't done a lot it's just a lot to be looking up i don't know it it's hard to look up this type of stuff when it's happening to you so my mom was doing research and technically the type of tumor I have is cancerous so I don't know if it's appropriate to say I have cancer I don't know I haven't really told people I've told two of my neighbors because I just feel like I can tell them what's going on because they they've watched Shiloh from me before and I didn't want them to just like not see me for a week and be like wait where is Sage and where is Shiloh basically we had like a little barbecue from a, a couple of neighbors and a couple of people that have dogs as well and um i told them before the barbecue and it's just weird because i feel like i'm holding this huge secret but i'm not i don't have to like i can tell people but i'm not ready to tell people i'm just at that point where i'm just frustrated and i keep it in all day because I'm around people and I try to act happy and whatever and bubbly but then the second I'm alone I just break down and I'm just scared and I'm frustrated I'm so frustrated I had a CT scan done Friday 
and that will tell me if it's spread to any lymph nodes. And the scary part is, is like, I don't know how I'm gonna be treated. Like, obviously I need surgery to get it removed, but if it's spread, do they still do surgery? Do I do radiation? Do I do chemo? Like, I don't know, and that's what's scary. I just want to be with my family already. I just want to be home with my family. That's all I want. Like, I don't like being here alone with this huge thing going on. I just want to be home right now. Take off to touchdown, five hours, 20 minutes. Uh, that should get us in there a few minutes early. You can do LAX. We're expecting a mostly smooth ride. Uh, maybe a few boats as we get out over the southwestern U.S. But, uh... Same with my dad. So I took in all the negatives and started I, I took in all the positives. <laughs> Both of you guys took in all the positives and I'm freaking out hysterically crying. Because he explained all of, you know, well, there's a chance that this can happen, there's a chance that that can happen. And it's just like, well, could I? And yeah, I guess. Like yeah. in the worst case scenarios, they have to cut the facial nerve, which leaves half your face pretty much. Like you can't smile, so your eyes, all this stuff. But it's an extremely like rare, extreme, like bad cases. And hers is newer, and the tumor is still small. And so the chances that it happen, that would happen, are like slim to none. I just want to know if I have cancer. That's the biggest thing. I don't like, it could be, but it couldn't be. I don't know, maybe. Like, I just want to know if it is or isn't. Like, and, that's all I want to know. Right, and his thing was based on the information that he has, he would assume that it is, but there's a slight chance that when they take it out and send it to pathology, that it's not. Regardless, the treatment's the same, it comes out. This is my sister Sage. She is currently in my room. It's my pretty twinkly lights. Comments? Concerns? Comments, concerns. Let's see here. I'm very tired. Very tired. And I have body chills 24-7. And it is 24-7. Stress. And <laughs> thank goodness she is a great sister like me. Um, therapy. I went to therapy today. Also my therapist. Can I be your vlogger? <laughs> I went to therapy today because I don't know how to cope with what's going on. <laughs> so I went and she gave me some coping things and advice on how to handle everything. So that was good. But, and tomorrow... I see one more doctor Yo. at UCLA, and then I decide which doctor I want. <laughs> Let me see this camera. Good morning. It's March 11th. I'm getting in the car to head to UCLA for another appointment consultation. And mother, my mom, is right here. Should we give an update on today, on the past couple of days? Today was a good day, so yes. <laughs> today was a good day. Uh, we talked to the doctor, obviously, and the plastic surgeon there, and I feel way better than before. Just, 
uh, I don't know. Okay, so here's my take on it. Is we were so uncertain with the, we saw three people, so uncertain with the first two, and so I, for one, was just praying like, please, 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 like, just give me an answer. Like, what, just, I wanted to feel comfortable with one or to have one yeah. stand out. And so the third one that we saw completely stood out. It's a no-brainer. It was like in every single way, in the bedside manner, in the procedure, in how we did it, in the, I mean, it, just in every way it stood out. Mm -hmm. So I feel very lucky. I know. It feels like just kind of a sigh of relief on that end. Yeah. But an update moving forward, I have to get a PET scan done. Um, but the problem mm -hmm. is, is my insurance doesn't cover Florida. So that means I need to come here for at least like 48 hours to get that done, get some blood work done, and then hopefully the scheduling person will call my mom and we can schedule surgery and hopefully it's not too far out. The good thing is, is he hasn't like made us worry about the future. It's just getting the tumor out now. And then when the pathologist, right, mm -hmm. sees it, then we go from there. So yeah. it's not like I need to stress out because I already have enough stress to think about and worry about right. so right and for one thing he said was the type of tumor that she has there's all sorts of stuff some could be just absolutely nothing and then some could be very 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 serious and so he said if you're gonna have a tumor like this is you know one of the better ones to have so that was comforting it still sucks it still sucks. cancer yes. but and still has to have surgery for sure no matter what yeah the scar but should that the recovery <sighs> should be a full recovery and the rate of reoccurrence is very very low are you gonna say anything i'm getting an ekg done and I stopped breathing. <laughs> <laughs> I just got the pre-op exam done. And I have to see, what, what, who do I have to see? Cardiologist. A cardiologist. And get a what done? Stress test. Stress test done. And I have my PET scan tomorrow. And I have to get blood work tomorrow. And I leave on Saturday. So I have to fit all this in in one day. And we don't even know if I can get the cardiologist appointment tomorrow. So... It's 10 o'clock at night and I'm in bed, but I want to share some very, very relieving news. Um, my surgeon doctor called my mom today and the cancer did not spread to any part of my body. So my chest, which was the main concern um, because the type of tumor I have, um, it spreads to your chest. So no lymph nodes, no chest, and I'm so happy, and it's just hitting me now. Like, when I heard that, I didn't really feel any emotion, because, like, I just was like, okay, I still have to have surgery, I still have cancer, but, like, now that it's sunk in, I am so happy. I'm so lucky that it didn't spread, and I'm so lucky and grateful that I caught it this early on obviously it sucks what I'm going through right now sucks but I don't have to go through treatment I don't have to do radiation I don't have to do chemo I like and those things are awful like what it does to your body is so awful and traumatic and the fact that I caught it so soon Oh my god, like I am so grateful right now. I'm so lucky and I was Honestly, I was mentally preparing myself for the worst which obviously no one should do and I'm normally not that type of person I'm very optimistic and I think positive But like I was like, you know what? Worst case it spreads to my chest. I'm out to do treatment. I'll be fine. We're gonna do it I got this and then when I found that I was like it just like shock like I'm so relieved so relieved so PET scan results came back clear <sighs> oh my god yes 
I'm so happy. <laughs> Today is the day. The last time you'll ever see me with a scar on my face, my neck. We're in the hospital. I go crazy. I have my eyes in. It's 9.01 at night on April 15th. I haven't given an update in a while, so I want to do that today. Specifically today, because I have great news. <laughs> I want to say thank you to every single person that has reached out, every single person that has left a comment on a YouTube video, an Instagram picture, a DM, a phone call, a text message, whatever it is, thank you. Thank you for all the love and the support and thank you to everyone who got me flowers, like my, like that's incredible. The gift baskets and the blankets and the baked goods, everything, thank you. It's, I swear knowing that I have like an army behind me just made this so much easier to go through and I haven't even given updates about like the hospital and everything like that and my surgery so basically let me get comfortable my surgery went amazing um i was super nervous but um i actually like i thought i would go in there and start crying out of fear but i made a joke about Grey's anatomy and then i made one comment like i'm scared and then that's all i remember during my surgery and i woke up and the recovery process has been really hard, actually. I've been in crazy amounts of pain. Um, I can't talk normal. My, I, that's as big as my mouth can go or wide. I can't like stick my tongue out. I can't really eat. I am so lucky because they had to move my facial nerve. My tumor was wrapped around a ton of nerves and I'm pretty sure my facial nerve so the fact that I have full function in my face is a miracle and I had a great team of surgeons and doctors with me I've been MIA I haven't been posting which is the least of my worries I haven't been on my phone I haven't documented anything because I've just been in a lot of pain. I've been recovering. It's been hard. It was a huge surgery. 
they stretched my muscles to fit the hole in my face from the tumor and the margin they had to take out. So like, it, my face is stiff, my whole face is numb and it hurts, I can't sleep, like it's been really hard but I'm so lucky, I'm okay, I'm so lucky that it went amazing and today I went to the doctor to get my stitches removed which you can see and I got the news that I am cancer free. so happy. The surgeon came in, my oncologist, he's like specializes in neck and head cancer basically and he said to me like when I was in the hospital he came in to check on me and he was like so we took the whole tumor out, we took some lymph nodes out um, and on Thursday we'll find out if you need to do chemo and radiation. So up until this today, I didn't know what was happening. It's the crazy thing about cancer and going through this stuff is there's no one solid answer. There's no one solid thing to like look forward to. It's all kind of a guessing game, which is not easy to go through when it's this difficult. But up until today, I was terrified that I would have to do treatment but especially because my surgeon is so conservative and he's so not over the top but he's extra cautious just i can't believe it like i'm so lucky i'm so happy and i am making this clip right now in this video and if i share this with people i hope you know how serious to take your health because if i didn't listen to my body and I didn't go to different doctors because another doctor said I was fine, but I knew deep down I wasn't fine. I most likely would have had to do chemo, radiation, or it would have spread to my chest. Like, you just, you have to listen to your body. You have to. And if you go to a doctor and you don't feel right, and they say you're fine, but you don't feel fine, go to a different doctor because your health, matters the most out of anything and if you feel off speak up but my type of cancer i had is super super low grade and is a slow grower so that also helps i got really lucky with that like it would take a long time for it to spread but still like it could have been a different type it could have been a different type and it could have spread so if you're listening to this Take care of your body and listen to it. I can move forward with my life. Like I can leave this in the past and I'll have to come back in three months for scans and then probably every six months and then every year and then every two years and every three years. But I can leave this chapter behind me and I'm so happy because it's been really, really hard. It's been the toughest thing I've ever had to go through and I know that there's lessons behind this. Um, I just, I'm so happy. Also, it's a low chance that it could come up again and I could get this again, but it's low. So that's also a great thing to hear. But I just wanna thank everyone. If you're watching this and you work at UCLA Ronald Reagan Hospital, thank you for being so amazing and everyone was so kind and loving and I'm just so ready to move on and honor every April of Head and Neck Cancer Awareness Month. I got my pin and yeah, I guess this is the end of this chapter.